Hey, my friends, we're a little bit deeper into the woods now, and I'm going to use a quieter voice because our friend Beatrice, the porcupine, might be really close by. This tumble of rocks is making a really good home for our porcupine friends. And one of the ways that Patty knows that, that Beatrice, or a porcupine, has been here recently is if we look really closely down here, we can see a whole bunch of porcupine quills. So that's a really good clue. And I can peek all the way down under that rock and see even more quills. I'm going to ask my friend Patty if she minds if I pick a quill up out of there. Patty, would that be okay, or is it better to not reach in there right now? I think you could pick up one of the quills right on the outside. Okay. And that would be fine. So my friends, in case you didn't know what I meant when I said quill, right here is a porcupine quill that we just found here at the entrance to this den. I'm going to set it down and have a quiet seat and see if we're lucky enough for Beatrice to come out and say hello to us. I've known this little porcupine for two years. She was just a baby when I met her last year. So she's almost two and usually she comes out to say hello when I stop by to visit. We'll see, it takes her a few minutes and it's the morning. Porcupines are nocturnal, which means it's sleepy time for her. We'll see if she'll come out and visit with us though. Hey bee, are you home? Hey little bee. This is a friendly noise that porcupines make to greet each other. Hey, bee. I am thinking about all of the different adaptations that a porcupine has. And I'm wondering if you can just talk to us about a few of them. Well, you see this crazy hairdo she has? All these long hairs on the top of her head? Maybe. Those are how she feels her way through the world. She has terrible eyesight. But those are all whiskers, so she can sense what's around her. That is one adaptation. And you see all that nice, fluffy black fur she has? It's very, very warm. You mm -hmm. might even think she doesn't have quills this time of year, but they're in there. They're all in that thick, woolly fur. And now that she's eating that biscuit, you can see her long claws. And you also get a sense of how good she is at handling things, like acorns and nuts. So she can pick them right up and hold them while she uses her very sharp teeth to bite through the shell. 
Mm. So sharp teeth and sharp claws. And, and sharp, sharp quills. quills. Got it. You are sharp. You are sharp, B. And Patty, something else I'm thinking about is where we just found Beatrice. So she came waddling out of this rock outcropping. But sometimes I've seen porcupines way up high in trees. Isn't it crazy to think an animal that's built like this climbs trees? Yes. Yes, this, this chubby little beastie is a very good climber. And when she turns around, you will see one of the best tools she has for climbing. It's her tail. Porcupines have very, very strong tails and they can wrap them around things and they can use them as a fifth leg. Wow. When they sit up like she's doing right now. She's, hello bee. She's sitting back on her tail like it's the third leg on a stool. And when she's going up trees, it's a brace that keeps her from sliding back down the tree. Wow, that with her sharp claws must make her an excellent tree climber. She is. She's not, she's not graceful and quick like a squirrel, but she sure can get up and down. And what is the very bottom of her paws like? It looks like uh, the pebbly surface on feety pajamas. <laughs> And is that helpful in climbing as well? Oh, yes. It really helps her grip the tree. Beatrice, thanks so much for this visit. Are you going back to bed? She's not choosing the easiest way to go in, but porcupines never do. Night, Beatrice. If you have enjoyed this video, please visit our website to learn more about what we do and consider making a donation.